So let us begin. As the author of St. Luke's Gospel tells the story of Palm Sunday, it was an amazing day. That day so long ago that we now commemorate is Palm Sunday. On that day, Roman Governor Pontius Pilate made his grand entry into the city of Jerusalem just before Passover. Every aspect of his triumphal procession was designed, designed to shock and awe. Perhaps Pilate rode in an imperial chariot pulled by a pair of well-matched horses. <coughs> Perhaps he was surrounded by Rome's military might as a signal to the people of Jerusalem. Perhaps we can almost envision that grand event today, envision row after row of Roman centurion marching lockstep, their feet creating a cadence which seems to shake the ground and reverberate through the air. The people of Jerusalem, they watched in sullen silence. They knew and feared these men, warriors who were, were known for following orders without questions or without qualms. Others who had rebelled against Roman imperial power had been crushed by soldiers like these, merciless men who slaughtered the rebels along with their wives, women, and children. The few lucky enough to survive could look forward to a life both brutal and brief as a slave. These imperial soldiers were marching into Jerusalem as a living projection of the power of Rome. They reflected the emperor's willingness to crush anyone who stood in their way. Pilate's return to Jerusalem was not a happy event for the Jews who lived in that city. No one in the crowd shouted words of welcome. No one spoke words of joy. No one broke the sullen silence of people forced to witness yet another show of force by an occupying power. This was the dark and disturbing grand entry of Pontius Pilate into the city of Jerusalem so many years ago. Far from this scene at another entrance to the city, Jesus made his final entry into the Jerusalem. Instead of riding in a war chariot, Jesus sat upon a young horse, a colt. In other gospels, it's called an ass. Instead of phalanx upon phalanx of soldiers, Jesus was surrounded by his disciples and people who loved him. Instead of sullen silence, Jesus was greeted by waves of sound as a multitude of people joyfully and loudly praised God for Jesus. They cried, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. The contrast between the two triumphal entrances could not be more clear or compelling. One man, the temporal ruler, exercised power through domination, death, and destruction. The other man was a prince of peace who ruled in people's hearts through abiding love and absolute forgiveness. The first was a ruler in and of this world, the second a king of a different kind, one who ruled through love in the hearts and minds of his people. But this kind of kingdom was unknown to Pontius Pilate and the powers of Rome. To them, any Jew claiming to be a king was a potential problem, someone who could spark a revolt, someone capable of disturbing the status quo. And if someone reported how a troublesome Jew was claiming to be both a king and the mythical rabbi, well, that was a double threat to Rome's imperial interests. Perhaps that's why some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, stop these tell you to order your disciples to stop. The Pharisees recognized the power of the spoken word and realized the danger of people claiming Jesus was king of the Jews or welcoming him as the Messiah. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if the stones were silent, the stones would shout out. Jesus is at the apex of his ministry. He can almost feel the cries of people resonating through the streets, through the airs, and through all of creation. So Jesus continued riding on into Jerusalem and toward his fate. His was the journey we will retrace this Holy Week. On Monday, Monday, Thursday, we'll stand with Jesus at his last supper with his disciples, kneel with him in the garden at Gethsemane, and watch in horror as he is betrayed by Judas. On Good Friday, 
will gather in the sanctuary and online and then walk with Jesus through his final hours, retracing his steps towards cross and tomb. On Holy Saturday, we will commemorate the harrowing of hell in a special morning prayer service online. And then we will mark his resurrection with a great vigil of Easter Saturday night and two joyous services on Sunday. But today we stand in the last Sunday of Lent at the cusp of Holy Week. We begin our worship today with psalms and psalms and joyful songs. We will spend our time together today hearing the passion story and looking forward to what will happen next. So let us begin remembering his entry into Jerusalem, an act of power that was designed to fulfill an ancient prophecy. It was the prophet Zechariah who wrote, as the King James translation puts it, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. Riding upon an ass. As I remember that phrase, I also recall a sermon story from seminary. When planning my seminary studies, I decided I wanted to learn how to worship like an Anglican, wrestle with scripture like a rabbi, and preach like a Baptist. So when it came time for me to study preaching, I chose to study at the American Baptist Seminary of the West. And there was taught by the Reverend Dr. J. Alfred Smith, senior pastor of the Allen Temple, at Baptist Temple in Oakland, California. Now, by the time I studied with Dr. Smith, he was a senior, senior citizen. Each class, Dr. Smith would slowly walk into the room and began speaking very quietly. But as he spoke, he built up both momentum and volume. Slowly his teaching became preaching, and that man could preach. After an hour and a half, he was no longer tired, but we, his students, were exhausted. <laughs> During one class, Dr. Smith told us of his favorite Palm Sunday sermon. He started retelling the gospel story of Palm Sunday Jesus decides to make this grand entrance to Jerusalem, lowly and riding upon an ass, up upon the colt of the foal of an ass. So he sends two disciples off to fetch a young ass. The men do as they are told, and Jesus rides it into Jerusalem. Now that road was crowded, and all along the way people spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Others raced ahead shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. All of that putting down of cloaks and cutting of palms and crying Hosanna, I figure that must have taken a long time. So it seems safe to say that the day was drawing to a close when Jesus finally got where he was going. As the procession stopped, some wondered because Jesus seemed to pause, perhaps to savor the day or perhaps to think about what would happen next. I can almost see the scene now. Jesus rides up on that ass and stops and pauses and people begin to quiet down. Soon the street is quiet, filled with people peering over each other's shoulders to see what will happen next. The disciples pause and turn to watch silently, also wondering what will happen next. Above all heaven holds its breath as angels and archangels pause and wonder what will happen next. Even the little ass turns his head to Jesus almost asking why he hasn't gotten off yet. For nothing can happen. No crucifixion, no resurrection, no redemption. Nothing can happen until Jesus gets up off his donkey <laughs> and changes creation. Nothing happens until Jesus gets up off his donkey. That's what Dr. Smith <coughs> preached, and he was right. That's also true for you and for me. Nothing will change in our life unless we get up off our donkey and change our lives. We've almost completed the personal journey through 40 days and 40 nights of Lent. Some of us have given things up while others have taken new things on. Some have been challenged by Sunday sermons or by Friday Bible study, while others may have found spiritual grace in our fr Friday devotions, the Stations of the Cross, and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. 
But what Lent is really all about is challenging our spiritual status quo. The status quo that keeps each of us from doing those things which we know we ought to do and allows us to do those things that we know we ought not to do. Nothing will change in our life unless we get up off that donkey and change lives. Palm Sunday is about responding to the challenge of Lent. It's about getting up off that donkey and changing our life. It's about taking what we've learned or discovered and applying it to change the status quo of our spiritual life. We can ride through Lent on a donkey, but when we reach Palm Sunday, we face the same question as Jesus, because nothing will happen until we get up and embrace change. The same is true for every parish, including this one. My task this morning is not to tell you what to change nor is it to propose how this parish should change to meet the challenges of our new time and place. Instead, my goal is to remind you that we cannot find the new life of Easter without first going through Lent and then getting up off our donkeys. So get up off your donkey, people. Change the world, one day at a time. That is the path that Jesus walked. Let us walk it together this Holy Week into Easter and beyond.